Hi, I'm Angela Lucier with the UMass Amherst Alumni Association, and I'm here today with Peter D. Giamarino, who is our Bateman Alumni Scholar in Residence, and we're going to ask him a couple questions about his presentation and his work. Now, I'd like to hear about what your company does. You're the principal of Intelliven, which is a training and consulting firm for growth-driven individuals who are trying to build a successful venture, correct? Right. Okay, so can you explain a few of your company's strategies that help make your clients successful? Sure. Well, we uh, are all operators, people who have been in businesses who have run successful businesses and grown them. And the way we like to say it is we help organizations that get started to get from little to big. Mm -hmm. So we don't go from nothing to something, we go from something to a lot. And typically that means helping leaders get clear about what they're trying to accomplish and bring a team of people together to work all on that same agenda, to each apply their great strengths, to work together to accomplish their common goals. Your presentation is about the seven truths to help you change the world. Can you tell us about one of the seven and how you identified it and, and why it's on the list? Sure. One of the truths is that you can't do much alone. It, it takes help, you need help. Mm -hmm. and. The, see, that's the whole idea of the truth is each truth drives an action. So the tr truth in that case is no one does much alone. The action that drives is to get help from the outside. So the question is, how did I figure out that that was so true yeah. and to do that? Well, in 1989, I was running a business that had grown from nothing to $30 million nationwide. And it certainly gotten a little bit stuck. It was hard to figure out now that it was so big, how do I keep control of everything? Do I organize things by client, do I organize things by market, do I organize things by, by what we do or by product? And I had been trained that, you know, I should know the answer to that. You know, here, here I was sort of the smart guy mm -hmm. that was running this big thing that was very successful. I should know the answer. Bill Gates would know the answer. Steve Jobs would know the answer. So I'm supposed to know the answer. So I figured out three different ways of doing it, asked everybody I could think of for input on which one was the right one. And I knew there was a right one, but I couldn't figure out which one. Yeah. So I, I finally got some help from the outside. I call, I call this professional organization development consultant in. I explained to him the three different ways I could think of to do this and what was good and bad about each of them. And he sat down and took a long pause and said, they're all right and they're all wrong. I said, what do you mean? He said, the one that's right is the one that everybody decides to work together to make right, whatever it is. Whichever one you pick can easily fail. Yeah. The trick is get everybody on board. Of course, brilliant. That's something I didn't know. What that taught me was not only the right answer for that question, but it was okay not to know the answer. Yeah. And that the real, the real point was, when you get stuck and you don't know the answer, find someone who does mm -hmm. and get them involved. And, and that's what I learned from that. And that truth has stuck with me and been a, a very key point around which I developed a whole model for supporting leaders and helping them learn that it's important to get good at getting help. Mm. Um, what's one thing that everyone in business should either spend more time doing or learn in order to be more successful? One of the, uh, one of the truths is that it's okay to be, to want to do what you, what you like to do and to want, and to do what you're good at. Mm -hmm. And too few of us, kind of building on your last question, uh, too few of us are very clear about what it is we like and want and, and are good at doing. Yeah. And, and so the thing I think all of us could stand to do is get more in touch with what we're good at and what we like mm -hmm. and give ourselves permission to go ahead and do that. Yeah. Because then you have harmony and alignment internally between what you're good at, what you like, and what you want. As a leader, what I find I spend a lot of time doing is getting to know the people I'm working with so I can tap into them from the inside and understand what they're good at and what they like and then give them the encouragement and the sense of appreciation and value for that so that they'll be okay wanting to do it. Mm -hmm. So everybody writes about focus. You know, Covey and Kaplan and Lencioni, they're all writing about focus, 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 and it's right, they're right, it's good. But how do you decide what to focus on? So this little tip here mm -hmm. is get in touch with what you're good at and what you like and find an opportunity in a situation where it's okay to do, where where that's what's valuable, and then give yourself permission to do that and you'll thrive. Um, so last question, we'd like to know what UMass did to help you as you started your career. Is there any one thing or a few things that you come to mind? Sure. So as uh, I was fortunate enough to be part of the bachelor's degree with individual con concentration program, BDIC. Yeah. And, and, and thanks to being involved with that and thanks to being part of the Honors College, well, at that time it was a program, the Honors Program, mm -hmm. Those two, being part of those two organizations forced me to learn some things I didn't even know at the time, but I had to get good at being clear about what I was trying to accomplish and then putting 
a plan together to accomplish it and then holding myself accountable to that plan to higher authority. So I had advisors at BDIC that required me to say, here's what I'm trying to do. Here's what I'm doing to do that. Here's what happened when I tried to do that. And here's what I did. Here's what I learned. And here's what I plan to do next. That governance, that rhythm has stayed with me and is now part of everything that I do uh, personally, but also with companies that I work with, organizations that I work with. And the idea of coming up with a plan, holding yourself accountable to that plan, driving to achieve that plan, and setting high goals and not being afraid to reach them are all things that I learned first here at UMass. Excellent. So different contexts, same skills. Yeah. Great. Thanks for being here with us today. No problem. Enjoyed it.